Anxiety can come as a lot of racing thoughts or worries or like king symptoms, but anxiety can come across physically as well, such as feel like your heart races fast, maybe you get trouble breathing, maybe you feel shaking or clammy or sweaty, lose sleep, maybe it's hard to fall asleep, maybe they're waking up during the night, it can cause people to feel tense or irritable, problems concentrating, mind going blank. So there's several different symptoms of anxiety and some people may experience anxiety different than others. An estimated 40 million of people suffer from anxiety disorder in the United States alone. And that's just in adults. That's not including children or other special populations. Why a video about anxiety? Knowing about anxiety, what causes it, what contributes to it, that alone is going to help with the treatment process. So I think this video is gonna be helpful for people who are suffering from anxiety. Also for people that may see someone suffering from anxiety or just not know why people suffer from mental illness in general. Knowing is really a lot of the battle and the more knowledge you can have, the more it's going to empower you to make the right decisions in your life to minimize the chances of these illnesses occurring in one's life. So first of all, I just wanna talk briefly about what's the difference between anxiety that people may experience in everyday life versus a clinical anxiety disorder. So a lot of times people may feel stressed, anxious, worried, have a few nights where they're trouble sleeping. That doesn't necessarily mean they have to see a doctor for it. But typically when the anxiety gets so severe that it impacts one's functioning in their life, such as their work, their school, or their relationships, then that's when they really need to get mental health treatment and see a clinical professional to try to address this. But what many people do not realize is all the circumstances that can play a role in causing anxiety or the mental illness in the first place, whether it's biological, psychological, social, or spiritual. So I'm gonna take a look at all these different aspects in anxiety, which can affect people to suffer from the illness in the first place. First of all, here are biological causes of anxiety. First of all, the biological conditions, as it sounds, it's gonna deal with like the human brain and body. And there's several conditions that can contribute. First of all, it's gonna be the genetics within the family. If someone has their parents are likely to suffer from anxiety disorder, it's more likely to get inherited to the offspring. In fact, anxiety is one of the most common mental health conditions or the highest inherited mental health conditions out there. But the good news is if someone has been on treatment for anxiety that's been helpful, such as a certain type of medication or therapy, there's a good chance it's gonna be helpful in the offspring as well. If someone has had family members that have had anxiety, they're more likely to suffer from anxiety itself. And that's whether that's related to genetics effects or learned behaviors over time or a combination of the approach, either way, it tends to run in families. Another biological aspect that can affect anxiety is nutrition. So the types of foods one eats can really play an important role on not only their physical health, but their mental health as well. Junk foods, a lot of sweets, processed foods, sugary stuff, those are more likely to lead to psychological problems like anxiety. So maybe eliminating some unhealthy foods from the diet or just trying to ensure one is having a well-balanced diet can help to deal with anxiety. Caffeine is a stimulant that can help with concentration, focus in the short term, but too much of it can cause anxiety. Nicotine often is used to help with concentration, focus, help people quote unquote relax or distress, but that can actually lead to more anxiety. Cannabis, I know many people say that they use cannabis at night to help with sleep, but unfortunately the withdrawal process or just the act of the THC alone, which is psychoactive, can lead to more anxiety problems and people who are using it. And so typically psychiatrically we recommend don't use cannabis. So other conditions of sleep. Sleep is an important role in health and well-being and as clinical professionals, we don't know exactly what the optimal way for sleep is, the best way to address it, but not sleeping can lead to anxiety down the road. So make sure to have a good steady night's sleep, try to be regular with the sleep patterns. And that can be a whole big topic down the road, but sleep can be important for one's body and mind. So that could be a biological factor that affects mental health. Sometimes medical conditions can cause anxiety, such as too much thyroid, so that would be needed, need to be treated by a medical doctor. Sometimes anemia, such as having low hemoglobin or low blood cells can cause anxiety, so that would need to be treated to address the anxiety. Sometimes there are certain medications that people have. Sometimes if there's an asthma exacerbation, people are on prednisone to help with the asthma, but the medication prednisone can cause anxiety in people. So there's a lot of biological factors that can contribute to anxiety. Here are psychological causes of anxiety.
Next, the psychological factors is also really important because psychologically we know that one's thoughts affects their feelings and affects their behaviors. So if someone is having a lot of anxious feelings, a lot of anxious thoughts, that's gonna to contribute to anxiety and really it can just stem from how they view themselves, how they view the world or how they view people around them. All of this, this perception of events that happens can play a huge role. Sometimes people have grown up in difficult environments or upbringing, sometimes they've been abused or exposed to tra traumatic stuff. This can all affect their mental health and their perception and can lead them more likely to have anxiety down the road. Maybe someone doesn't have much self-confidence or they have low self-esteem, so they're more likely to get anxious in maybe social situations that can contribute. A big portion of the psychological approach is relationships or friendships in general. And so maybe people have been taken advantage of or manipulated or um, have wrong expectations with certain relationships. So those can be important psychological patterns that need to be addressed, such as through therapy. So we talked about biological, we talked about psychological. Now we'll look at social aspects that can contribute to anxiety. Here are social causes of anxiety. Social aspects, simply put, is like anything that can cause stress. Maybe it's finances, maybe it's school, work, family, friendships, maybe it's legal stuff, maybe it's uh, housing. So all this stuff can play a role in causing anxiety. If someone has low income, maybe they're worried about accumulating more finances, about providing for the family, about making ends meet. So that alone is gonna cause anxiety. People who are homeless or maybe about to be evicted or you know, live even in an environment in the house that's maybe that's too cramped or not that good of an environment, that can all contribute to anxiety. So all these aspects in life need to be taken into consideration when someone is suffering from anxiety disorder. And spiritually as well. Here are spiritual and cultural causes of anxiety. Spirituality is an important component and just the cultural component is important. Because, you know, sometimes people tend to gravitate more towards people who have similar beliefs or values or upbringing as them. Maybe they have more common interests. And people who don't really have that sort of community or fellowship, that can cause some uh, anxiety, tension. It can just be a good support system. And if you take away that support system, that can lead to this sense of fear or anxiety. After putting most of it together, I realized there's a few things I left out which might be important to share. First of all, in the biological component, if someone has a history of anxiety, it makes it more likely that anxiety will happen down the road. Also, if someone's had a history of a head injury, maybe it damaged certain parts of the brain that make it more prone to anxiety. Maybe people are born with different neurobiological changes or hardwiring in the brain to make it more prone to anxiety. Also, alcohol, even though it's a depressant and can be calming when taking it, the withdrawal from it can lead to anxiety. And socially, I didn't even talk about social media and the impacts that might have on not only people's perception, but also their relationships and how they communicate with others. And then culturally, there's certain syndromes that tend to run in cultures. So certain conditions tend to permeate in some cultures more than others. So that should be taken into consideration. Spiritually, there may be some conflicts within one's faith and they need to sort this out through talking with like a priest or a rabbi or an imam or some sort of spiritual leader. So as you can see here, there's so many factors involved that can contribute to someone's anxiety that really you wanna make sure you are minimizing all these possible factors. So if you have a medical condition that's causing it, you wanna treat the medical condition. If you're using a substance that could be causing it, you wanna treat the substance. If you're depriving yourself of sleep that could be causing it, you wanna focus on the sleep patterns. So oftentimes when someone seeks uh, medications or seeks therapy or something like that, they may overlook some of these factors, but be sure to look at yourself biologically, psychologically, socially, and that can all help to minimize the chances of anxiety from happening down the road.